welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another episode of Breaking It Down with Boston. I am your host and second favorite Boston, <laughs> Cleon Boston, and today I am absolutely thrilled to be joined by a very, very special guest, a remarkable woman, but who's also a great friend. She is a high school business financial management teacher and I'm excited to have her here because we have great <laughs> things to talk about. Ms. Denise Turnbull. Dee, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Now today we are going to dive into you know her inspiring journey of overcoming bad credit, making transformative financial decisions, and uncovering practical means, you know, little things that we can do, make changes to make our financial future brighter than where it seems today. So today, you know, I've mentioned it on the first podcast, <laughs> the second podcast, I touched base with it with Coach Staley. We are going to dive a little bit deeper into how we do what I would term a financial makeover. All of us get excited for makeovers. <laughs> well, guess what? We're going to talk about how we can make a financial makeover in our lives so that we take the first steps in creating a brighter, more prosperous future together. So Dee, again, welcome. Thank you for having me. And it's a pleasure to be here to be able to give some insight on my financial journey so that it will be able to help someone out there who is viewing this podcast. And I remembered I would have, I would say, you know when they say the term sink or swim? <laughs> Well, I didn't know whether or not I could have sink or swim or float because I was in so much depth and um, I would say it's not me by my own strength that being able to get me out of this situation, but I would say it was God. God is the one that really gave me the insight as to what I need to do to get out of it as well as speaking to people like Cleon because we always spoke about financial literacy how we are going to be able to be better stewards of our own money and be able to equip our children to be able to do the same. Excellent. And I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, when I first started um, this podcast, I said we we're going to talk about faith, family, finances, real estate. And I'm glad you mentioned your faith. How has your faith journey helped you in this process of rebuilding your finances? One of the things that I had to do was to, I, I actually prayed to God and about me being financially free and the debt that I had. And one of the things he said to me in James is that you have to pay who you owe. So <laughs> it's not like I was thinking about, okay, being financially free and not thinking about the debt I had. He said to me, pay who you owe. And if he gave me that directive and that command, I had to be obedient to pay who I owe. Nice. I love that. Um, share a little bit of, with us. Um, you know, a lot of people see you, you're a wonderful woman in this community, um, you're a teacher, but we had discussions a lot, like years sure. now, yes. going back, <laughs> where we talked about finances and the changes we could make. Share with our audience a little bit about your journey. Um, for me, I, with my journey, I been through a divorce and not having a two income was a big, big issue for me. And, um, you know, you depend on somebody else to fulfill the things that you want. And, um, it was, it was something that I had to realize that it's not there anymore. So I need to do better. And with that happening, I had to really sit down and look and see, you know what, L look at what I have in front of me. And it was like bills, tuition, bills, grocery store, travel, buying what I want, not what I needed. Okay. <laughs> and um, that paid an impact on me. So I had to look, I had to really be transparent with myself and sit down and see, you know what, D, in order for you to get where you want to go, you have to be a good steward of your own money. And um, like I going back again and pay who you owe. 
So many times I would look at my bills and I would say, Lord, how am I going to pay this? And when I sat down and I prayed about it, the plan was for me to pay the little ones first and then move on and pay the bigger ones after. So you had to make an adjustment mm -hmm. in how you live. You yes. had to make sacrifices, would you say? A lot. And how you did things. Um, you know, sometimes it seems like we have no way out because you are in debt due to, you know, divorce and now going from a two income home to a one income home and you still had all the obligations that came with the two mm -hmm. income home. How were some of the ways you went about, um, you know, you said you paid the small ones first and then did you develop a process? Did you write your bills down? Did you, how, how did you do that? We want people to see if I'm in this position now, what's the first thing I do? Okay. For me, I'm a visual person. I have to see things written on paper because even sometimes you have your phone. I need to be able to grab it and see what I had. So I started to write down everything that I had. My receipts, I used to staple them together and make sure that, okay, this is what I'm going to, this is what I spend and I know what else I had in the bank to be able to cover that. So sometimes when my son was small and he wanted his friends to come over, you know, Aliyah then probably wanted their friends to come over. I used to say to him, Jordan, you know, they can't come this week because mommy ain't gonna pee. So <laughs> those are things I had to do. So I would write down everything that I wanted to have and then I would sit down with him and I would say, listen, this is what I could spend and you need to make it that you invite a certain amount of friends to be able to spend the money that I have. So one of the most important things for me was to write down everything that I was going to spend for that particular week, for that particular month. And if I had an overage, I will take it, I will transfer it over, maybe to a savings or something. But I am saying to you, my debt began in college. I could go back that far? Yeah. My debt began in college. You go to a big campus, you see everybody getting credit cards and you want to get credit cards because you want to feel like you're big. So I went in the line, sent up for a credit card. The only thing they asked me for was for my ID. ID. That's it. They asked me for my ID. I gave them my ID. I don't even think they asked me for my bill. I think they asked me for my bill, my, my um, schedule too. So I had my ID and my schedule and all they gave me was a cup or something, a squeegee ball. And that was my parting gift. Never asked me if I work a day in my life. And I did that and I went downtown in Philadelphia with my credit cards. And when I went into Macy's, to Gap or whatever, Victoria's Secret, they say, okay, you could, uh, would you like to put that on? Do you have a Victoria's Secret credit card? And I would say no. And they would say, would you like to open up one and you can get 20% of not. your total? And there it began. It began right there. Every store you go into, you get another credit card, you go into Gap, they give you the same thing. You go into um, Old Navy, the same thing. You go into Macy's, the same thing. So guess what? You have all these credit cards, the, the retailers, and then you have the banks. And I can attest to that because I went to school in Florida and I, I remember there was this Vogue store right across the street and I had to pass it going to <laughs> class and I had to pass it coming from class. And I would stop in there and they would say, 30% off if you mm -hmm. open an account today and go to the mall, they ask you the same thing. And so, and, and you learn more about that with me. <laughs> when Mr. Boston is back on, we're having a secondary conversation, <laughs> which will probably blow your mind. But I came out of school with so much credit card bills. True. And believe it or not, we learn Sometimes if you don't know better, you can't do better. But once you do know, then you make the changes that you need to make. True. And that was one of the main reasons. And I shared it with Alexis and Aaliyah as to why I implored them not to get a store credit card hmm. or any other credit cards that I felt they were ready. That's right. And I give God thanks because they listened. I, I told them how much in debt I was. I told them how much in debt I was. And I said, do not do it. You go to college, they're going to offer you these cards. I came out of college and I had those credit card bills for years. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. So you have to make that change. So you come out of school, you got married, you now belong to a two income family, and you're needing to, your credit, I assume, is shot. In the it is bad. <laughs> it, it is bad. Bad. <laughs> what did you do? What, you know, there's a lot of um, people that feel that they can't do anything in their own power with the help mm. of God. So when I say their own power, because we can't do anything in our own power. But that they can't do anything unless they have maybe a big company helping mm -hmm. them. But you made changes based on a lot of stuff that we discussed. Yes. You put it into place. Share with our audience some of those things that you put into okay. place. Okay. So I would say in come as as early as twenty nineteen, as late as twenty nineteen, I was I was not in debt, but I wasn't still spending my money correctly. And I needed a car. And I was taking care of my two parents and I needed to make sure that I have a reliable vehicle so that if anything happened, I would be able to transport them. So what I did in 2019 is that before, again, Cleon, before Didi go and get a secured card, I with my big self went and get a regular credit card. Get or apply for it. Applied for it. <laughs> and guess what they did? They denied me. They denied me. And I have all the secured credit card information in there. So a secured credit card basically is that you the, the credit card company would allow you to put $500, $200 on the secure card they're giving you. That they're going to tell you, okay, you can use it to purchase items. So I started up with a $500 credit card from, secured card from Discover. And I was paying it. Whatever I used, I would pay it. But then... Before that, I remember having a conversation with you, and you said to me, D, when you get a credit card, you can spend 30%, but I want you to spend like 10%. And pay it off. And pay it off. And I kept that resonating in my mind that I am going to only use that 10% and not the 30%. And I would say about it happened quickly in about a couple of months. I was able to get a card from Discover. And mind you, Discover was my first card I got in college, you know. It was my first card. And they gave me a line of credit of $2,500. And I paid it off. I paid it off every month. I wouldn't leave a balance on it. And I keep paying it off. And then what happened? Credit started going up. The card company started to send me more things in the mail. But at this time, I was not, I was not the, the Denise that I was in college many many years ago talking to Cleona we having these back and forth conversations about finances and I didn't have a credit card for many many years most of the times when I travel mm -hmm. I always use my debit card so one of the things that I did is that I use a debit card and I would save enough money to put on a debit card when I was traveling to rent a car and guess what happened you pay more money to rent a car because the insurance is higher and then they put a hole on your card because it's a debit card and I don't have a credit card. So I had to make sure that whenever I travel, that I had money on my account. It felt good to come back and not have to worry about being in debt. But at the same time, too, they were taking more money from me. Bingo. And I'm glad you touched base on that. I didn't even have that in my notes. But I could remember us talking. And I remember getting a couple of tickets for you at one point And you would just bring yes. your money. Mm -hmm. And I would buy the, the tickets. And then when you started to put the money on your debit card, I remember saying to you, D, that's not the way mm -hmm. to go. Yeah. Because when we use debit cards, number one, if someone steals your debit card, get your number and hack your account, you, your chances of getting that money back is it's slim to none. Yeah. If you have a credit card and someone hack it and charges things on it, you call the credit card company and say, hey, I didn't charge this. Someone had to have hacked my account. They're going to... Take that off your bill until they investigate it. Mm -hmm. And once it's shown that you didn't do the charge, they're going to take it off your bill, send you a new card, and you're still in business. Yes. So using a debit card, you know, a lot of people think that that's the way to go because that's the way they stay out of debt. But if you're disciplined enough to use a debit card where your money has to be there in order for you to use it, then you should be disciplined enough. We should be disciplined that's enough right. to be able to use a credit card Go home the same afternoon, the next day when it hits your bill, and pay it off from your bank account. Mm -hmm. We have to be prosumers of our money. That might sound crazy. A consumer 
you just spend. consume. <laughs> you consume. Spend and you make. But we need to be a prosumer mm -hmm. where our money works for us. Exactly. Where we don't spend a dime unless we're getting something back. And that's the belief we have to tell ourselves. That's yeah, the true. only way we become, you know, you, you talked about God saying pay who you owe. That's right. But he also says that as his children, we shall lend and not borrow. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, because his promises are not for somebody else, it's for us. It's for us. So in order for us to do that, we have to be good stewards. We have to make wise decisions. And if we didn't know it before, guess what? We learning some of it today. And he also spoke about storing of wealth. It's like an ant. You see an ant, and an ant is a small, small insect. But what they do is that they keep storing up their stuff for time. And that's what we need to do. We need to store up our wealth because in due time, we are we're going to, it. we're going to need it. Yes. And oftentimes we, we think about just spending, spending, spending and not giving our kids the information that they need to know. And one of the things that I, I, I shared with you is that I never told my son that I was in debt. Never. And to be honest with you, we had a telephone in the house and I never let him answer the phone because it was debt collectors calling oh, me. Man. And he would say, mommy, the phone, and I was like, don't answer it. It's it just for the internet. I used to do, I'm being honest. I say, it's just for the internet. We don't need to use, we have our cell phones. And I never let him use the phone. Then never let him answer. At one point in time, I took the phone off the hook so that he don't answer the phone. Because I was like, I didn't want him to lie and say, don't tell your mother, don't tell him what I am. I didn't want to do that. So instead of me having him to lie, I just took the phone off the hook and the phone just used to ring ring. It was in the computer room and I would just leave it stay there and ring and silently and we would just use it for the internet, which was true. It was using it for the internet, but I didn't want to him to know that debt collectors were calling me. So to save myself from that embarrassment, I really decided that I wanted to get out of debt. And um, like I said, I started back in I would say like in 2015 and then Hurricane came, it put me it set me back and then 2019, I really started to work on it. And I, I said to myself, I have to do it. And I remember calling and saying, Cleon, you know, what should I do? And like you said, you told me, D, don't use credit cards. I mean, don't use the debit cards. Use your credit cards. And you, you, you school me in what they do and the points and stuff like that. And when I got my credit card, I called you and I said, Cleon, I got a credit card. And a credit card that was not impacted by a low credit score mm -hmm. it was a regular american express credit card so you know you have to have good credit mm -hmm. to get that you were able to get your new brand vehicle yes um without any you know extremely high interest rates regular vehicle interest rate for good persons with good credit and that is a huge milestone and it started you know would you run writing down your bills yes. knowing how much you, you have to, to spend, how much you can afford to spend. But you also did something else. You started saving automatically and putting certain money in certain places because you said you want a savings for this and you want a savings for that. And that's something a lot of people don't think about. But we had a, a meeting with a financial um, planner for a year. And, and you know what, I, all then I was so excited about this podcast because I kept saying the things I learn, I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. And one of the first thing he said that all wealthy people have in common. One of the first things he listed was multiple savings accounts. Yes. And sometimes we think that's too much work. Why should I have to spend 50, send fifty dollars to this account, send fifty dollars to this one, send ten dollars for this? When that money is out of your check and it's gone, you're not gonna miss it. You're gonna live off of the rest. Yes. You're gonna live off of the rest. But it takes being so disciplined that that little ten dollars that you pushing aside to the credit union or to this one bank account or this one bank account. It makes a difference. You see, it, it grows. will make a difference because it grows. It grows. It grows. And and when you make those changes, I could remember when I started. I, I'm like D. I, I'm a visual person. I have a vision board and everything. But I could remember when I really got serious about finances. Alexis and Aliyah was still small. I used to talk to them about it. But 
I started using my credit card for everything. And one day, we had uh, my you know, it's been, I was trying to push this off, push this off, push this off. And finally we did, and we showed him our books, and he's like, again, he was like, how are you guys living? Like, <laughs> how are you guys living? And then he said, with all the, all the things he said to us, he made one profound comment. He said, money is made in fractions. Explain that. And money is spent the same way. Wow. And he said, because you don't always spend big chunks. That's so fractions. Yeah. Like, it don't always be a one. It could be a quarter yeah. of a one. It could be half. He said, my, so from then, I got this brilliant idea. Like, I went on this tangent. And, and Alexis will tell you, because they were still really young. They hadn't left here yet. And if they needed something from me that didn't re, wasn't a requirement to save their life, if I couldn't get it on my credit card, they weren't getting it. Mm -hmm. So every day, I used to go by this store right next to where I used to work. And they used to sell this boss banana bread <laughs> and hot chocolate that I used to buy every morning. And I started putting it on my credit card. Well, let me tell you, at the end of 30 days, you know what those 2 75 and 145 mm -hmm. add up? It's true. For a whole month? It's true. When I buy three banana bread and a hot chocolate for me and a juice for each of them, when I saw the amount of money that I was spending just in BJ's or RJ's alone, mm -hmm. I said, that's it. If they see me once a month or once a week, that was a treat. Okay. I stopped. But I needed to because we were so much in debt. And you had two family income. And I had, you had one and I had a two. Mm -hmm. And I was still in debt. So I had to really make tough choices. That's right. It's sacrifices. Yeah. It's sacrifices we have to make. But you know what? It's delayed gratification. Vacation. That's true. Because it's not like you will never get to the point where you could buy something again or enjoy what you're working for. But if you want to be able to get to that point, you have to put things in place now. Correct. So you put certain things on the back burner. And, and that changed a lot of things for me. That is why I could have told you about using a, a credit card rather than a debit, a debit card. card yes. And then I encourage everybody, get a credit card that pays you, gives you points. Whether for cash back yes, right. or for travel, be a prosumer. Write that word down. I want everybody to comment and the word prosumer when you when you listen to this video and say, I am now a prosumer. Make your money work, work for, for you. you. Get something back. Get something back. Make your money work for you. I go to a church now for the past three years. That because of COVID, they started allowing you to pay a tithes and offerings online Lying. because that way, even if you weren't in person, listen, I don't know if they think if people around me in church ever take note that man, she'll be standing up and singing, but every time that offering plate comes along, she never puts anything in it. I don't know if that ever works <laughs> in their mind, <laughs> but I oh, give God my is. tithes and offerings to God above every time on my credit card. Mm -hmm. You much points that to be every every time at the end of the year? Yep. Man, I'm excited. Double blessings. Blessings from God for obeying him and the blessings, blessings from back the for the company. <laughs> <laughs> and blessings back. But we, we gotta think as prosumers. We do. And and Cleo, you, you taught me a lot about that. So like every I let me tell you, my my American Express is my go-to card. If I even use in six dollars, I am using. I use it. For every single purchase I make. And sometimes I'm so upset. When they don't accept it. When they don't accept the American Express. I say, like, you're making me lose my points. Because I use it for everything. And I, the last time I traveled, I didn't even have to buy a ticket. Yeah. I didn't even have to buy a ticket. I, 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 use it for every, I use it for every single... Listen, if I could have paid, right? My, my car note with it, I'll have paid. <laughs> I will have used it, but you know they, they're not going to allow you to use to pay with your credit card. So let me let me ask you a question. You're a teacher. You teach business. You teach, you know, um, communications and, and financial management. Can you imagine she was in debt? But what do you do to implement certain things to your kids? How do you encourage them? Because I hear the stories from you. <laughs> I hear how excited your students get because you are now working to give them information that they that and this isn't and i'm not just talking stuff that's part of the curriculum mm. i'm talking about the things that you do outside of the curriculum to encourage your students so 
I, I, I started to teach a class last year and we were, ta we were um, talking about stacks and I had a young man in my class. He wanted to use his phone and I was like, why are you using your phone? And he was like, Mr. Tom, you taught us about stacks and he was that age where he could have gone and get his own stacks. So I have a phone stand on my desk and he saw the phone. So he was like, Mr. Tom, I'm not going to touch the phone. I am just going to be doing my stuff. And I would allow him to look at his phone. And this guy actually was doing day trading. Day trading. And I said, I said, day trading won't send my mind crazy. <laughs> but he was doing day trading on his phone. And sometimes I'm teaching a course and a, a subject matter. And he was like, Mr. Mleg, yeah, my stuff went up. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so there was a young man who wanted to do day trading as well. And he, he asked his mom, if she could have been the one to open up the account for him and he said and she said yes so now this year um some of my students they haven't gone into day trading but they are into savings some of them want to be able to get involved in online banking so this one student she told her friend and he came to me and we had a whole discussion this is not a student of mine and we had a whole discussion about online banking about not being more and brick and about utilizing opening your bank account and he wanted to just he said he wasn't into trading yet because he didn't understand so he wanted to do online banking because i ex and i am very for me to teach that class i have to be transparent very much so so i showed him how to deposit a check online i showed him how to about online about the online banking that modern brick is strictly online banking so he went and he opened up a, an account in Citibank. And he also wanted to do the one in SoFi. So I said to him, well, for SoFi, for you to maximize the interest rate that they're going to give you, you have to have um, direct deposit. So he works, and he works for a company here, and the company said they can split his check. So right now, he is doing online deposit with SoFi Bank, and SoFi rating right now is like 4.50%. You don't find that in St. Thomas for a, for a savings account. I mean, they're going to give you a CD where it's going, to, it's going to lock you in and you can't get your money out. But because he's just doing direct deposit, there's no cap on saying that he doesn't have access to his money anytime. So he's now able to put his money in SoFi and start doing that. And I'm having them, I'm letting them know, once you start saving now, if I put $25,000 in my account now and my sister put $25,000 five years from now, I am going to be making more money because guess what? I am going to have compound credit, compound interest. She is starting out, so she's not going to get as much as I have. So they, 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 they are eager to learn. They're eager to learn about all those different things and what they should do. And right now we are talking about these um, prepaid cards. Whereas some people, we are talking about underbank. And I know we are off the subject, but I just want to let the audience to be talking about underbank and unbanking. And underbank is where people don't have access to um banks in the neighborhood and on the banks where you don't have you don't you don't want to put your money into your account because back back in the day people didn't trust banks they didn't trust and i have to now equip them and let them know you, when you leave from here st thomas you need to have a bank account mm -hmm. you need to be able to get your money transferred and you'll be able to have access to your money whenever you want to have access to it because many people who are have poor credit don't have access to banks they go and they get these prepaid card and then they go to these check cashing places okay. that cost billion that make billions of dollars of the banks of poor people it's a need but then they're going to charge them to cash their check you go and you get your check you go and buy a prepaid card it charge you to get it open then when every every time you make a payment to somewhere and you put your money as fake money on this card and you use your card it charges you a dollar for every time you make a payment. And and that's a good point. That goes back to the fact that money is spent and made in fractions. Mm -hmm. it, we, don't, we don't mind paying that extra dollar because it seems like it's only a dollar. But those dollars add up if you're using this card three and four times a day, if you're using it five and six times a week, if you're using it 20 and 30 mm -hmm. times a month. It adds up. So I know we can't cover every single thing today. But I really wanted, because you and I have been speaking about this for years, 
and you have fine you you know you put it into practice and i know i was so happy when you called me and told me you qualified for your amex card when you qualified for your loan because i knew where you came yes. from and i wanted our audience to know this is just the start but i want you to know it's possible it is it is possible i don't care where you are right now you can decide i am going to be a prosumer God's principles will apply to my life. I will lend and not borrow. I will lend and not borrow. And you speak it. You write it down. And you say, these are my bills every month. Let me see what I can do. If you can't add extra income to help you get rid of a bill faster, the only other option is to cut your expenses. That's true. And then the extra money that you have, if you have $5 extra, you put it on a bill. But those are your goals right now to become a prosumer. And we're going to talk so much more in depth on, on financing, on loans, on um, you know, credit cards versus debit card, and investing. Yes. We got a whole background, and I'm going to have some great experts and people like me who aren't an expert, but mm -hmm. whose experience has taught them on, on, on how you can move forward. So I have just a couple requests for you as we get ready to end this session. Dee, thank you for coming. I thank you for being so transparent. Me. But I have a couple things. Like, share, and comment for us. And, and definitely subscribe. You have to subscribe. Our goal is to get to 1,000 subscribers minimum by December. Like, share, and subscribe. But also write in the comments, I am a prosumer. So that I know you heard what we said today and you are deciding to change your financial future. We're going to also have lots of tips that you can share with your children going forward so that they won't have to overcome the obstacles that we had to, that you had to. So once again, I thank you for joining us on this episode of Breaking It Down with Boston. We love you and I look forward to having you on this journey with me as we continue in the future. God bless you. And, and I know we've spoken and we've referenced a number of companies, Amex and some other companies um, when it comes to our credit cards, but please know that they are not sponsors of this podcast, so they are in no way, you know, affiliated with us. I just wanted to make reference to, you know, some of those companies that worked for us.